Mamluks is actually one of the strongest nations in the game and one of the big contenders for doing a world conquest, the easy mode especially if you're newer to the game. So first off they start as the second greatest power in the world with 361 development, a massive army and a great opportunity for expansion because they are extremely central and that's going to be vital to our strategy today. That's right, we're going to be killing off the Ottomans extremely fast and after we kill the Ottomans, estate wise pretty standard estate with a plus one mana privileges, supremacy over the crown, strong duchies for the extra diplo relation slots and leave one diplo slot open here because we're going to need to get the Amir integration policy later on. We want to be diplo vassalizing a few nations around us including Medina since we have a mission revolving around Medina that lets us give these lands over to uh, Hejaz after we've made them a our diplo vassal. We're also going to get our rivals and we're going to go for the Ottomans obviously, Karakoyunlu and we're also going to go for for Aragon as our third rival. We're also going to be setting up our boyos here and we're going to be sending all of these uh, units over to the Byzantine lands because that's right we're going to be attacking the Byzantines in one month. The Mamluks also have the special Mamluk government reform that offers them guaranteed extra admin skills for their leaders, monthly autonomy, governing capacity cost and the Mamluk interactions that we're going to go through a little bit uh, later down the line. We're also going to make a Bedouin one of our accepted cultures for the time being and alliance wise we're gonna go for the Tunisian alliance since we need to make sure Tunis does not ally the Ottomans if we don't get that alliance the Ottomans might get that alliance and then we have to fight on two fronts because of our size look at the amount of nations that want to diplomatically become our vassal and we're not gonna disappoint we're gonna make quite a few of these our vassals diplomatically such as the nation of Fezan time to get a general since we're gonna need one for the attack on uh, the uh, Byzantine lands and let's bring our fleets over to the Aegean Sea. It is the 11th of December, so we're going to be attacking the Byzantines. I'm not going to cobaladrate Serbia because I don't really want any of their stuff. We are no CBing the Byzantines, of course, since we do not have a uh, proper Cassus Belly right now. And we can also use this interaction here to get a little bit of money. So we're going to go for lower corruption, which means we debased and we got zero corruption, starting with 200 ducats without having sold our crown loans or anything of the sort and without taking any loans. A few months have passed. We can make diplomatic uh, Medina our vassal and we can also do the holy city which means that we can uh, let Hejaz inherit Medina so it's going to be easier for us since we don't need to lose two diplo relation slots and because we do have the city of Medina we get one extra missionary and some legitimacy so that's something to look forward to and the brave Byzantine armies have been crushed Arrivederci boyos I didn't even assign a general I know but it's fine because we have uh, Muslim tech units which at the start of the game are better than any other tech units they're they're going to be overpassed by the uh, Tech 5, military Tech 5 Ottoman units, which are way better. But we're going to kill off the Ottomans before they get a chance to get military Tech 5. Time to make our second vassal, Fezan, a uh, proper integral part of our country. I did this mainly because if I didn't do it, then the uh, Tunisians likely would have diplo vassalized Fezan. And I'd rather be the one that does it instead of the Tunisians. Oh, don't mind if I get some prestige, thank you very much. Because I managed to get a claim on Dulkadir from my estate, I'm also attacking Dulkadir that is allied to Aniza to kill both of these nations off in the process. You can actually diplomatically vassalize Dulkadir if you want to. I don't want to. I want to directly own those lands. And we can definitely do two wars at the same time as the uh, Mamluks. Even four or five wars at the same time from the beginning since we have extremely strong units and we are a really strong nation. Also just notice these guys have camels. What? Oh my god, I never noticed the sprite for the horse is actually a camel. Whenever your leader dies, you have a special succession similar to the Ottoman succession where you get to choose between the various culture groups that we have accepted. So we have Egyptians represented, Syrians, Bedouins, and Circassians. Now if you do choose Circassian, you do get army tradition and this is our primary culture. Circassians basically is where majority of the Mamluks originated from as uh, the Mamluks historically speaking were slave soldiers that ended up ruling the country after they broke away from being slave soldiers and decided that they're Chad lords. If you go for Egyptian though, which majority of your country is Egyptian, then you get bigger bonuses here. So you recruit more manpower because you have more Egyptian provinces. Right now we have no Circassian provinces, so we cannot recruit any manpower with this interaction. Similarly, because we have no Circassian provinces, we get zero ducats. So if I was to go for an Egyptian ruler like this, 
this now I'm getting 8,000 manpower 300 ducats or minus 5 all power cost depending on whatever I go for but that does mean we did not get the uh, Chad Lord that had the army tradition so keep that in mind there's pros and cons to this dual Kadir and we're also gonna get one F please for the Byzantines after we finish sieging this looks like the Ottomans attacked Kandar first or as they say in Turkish Chandar that's exactly how they say it in Turkish okay especially with the R at the end anyway um because they did attack Chandar and they didn't attack Byzantium that kind of cucks over my plans I was hoping to go in a defensive war against Mins. this means I am gonna have to attack them directly which is fine it will just make it a little bit longer for me to take them out we got a manpower deficit as well let's uh, slacken our recruitment to get that manpower deficit ah the sack of the Constantinople and what is this seven pretenders rise up in after all oh, right okay so because I didn't go for Circassian uh, I will have some pretender rebels that will try to enforce the Circassians back on the throne here instead of the Egyptians that's fine they're pretty small so I'm gonna e easily crush them so we don't need to actually fight the Serbians we can just enforce our demands like this I am obviously vassalizing the uh, Byzantines and I am directly taking ownership over Athens apparently I can uh, vassalize them and take their stuff but I cannot take their money are you actually kidding me right now I can only take three ducats bro you may take my freedom but you may never take my financial situation that's uh very Byzantine of them oh this is beautiful we're gonna use uh, the Byzantines core to attack Epirus which appears allied to the uh, Knights I want to kill them on the Knights right now since the Knights are one of the most annoying creatures in the Mediterranean whenever you're playing as a Muslim nation since they raid my coastline continuously destroy my economy I want to kill them as soon as possible even before the uh, Ottomans so yeah plans have changed boys I know it's for a noble cause all right this is honestly something you should take note of like in your games in general try your best to mold yourself on whatever RNG you do get rather than trying to mimic or completely do the same thing that somebody else did in their game that's not how this game works because every single game is different so you just need to know how to adapt and overcome any situation that comes at you I'm gonna need a little bit more money for the upcoming wars so I'm gonna go for the uh, burgers guild that are 1% loans essentially free money and I'm gonna use these loans to build 10 galleys minimum as well as recruit some mercenary companies after I slack in my recruitment a little bit more so we can do it two times more there you go maybe one time more yeah two generals we got one more and we can get rid of some of the trashy generals like uh, that guy also means we got rid of this disaster since we have above 50% manpower now most disappointing fight ever we only managed to capture one ship but I guess one ship is better than no ships right let's go ahead and uh, fully annex the uh, knights here we are starting to get a coalition of uh, Christian nations mostly so uh, no Nobody we need to worry about realistically speaking we're also going to be deleting the fort that they have in this province when it comes to Epirus we're doing split seas half for our Byzantine broski and half for our nation since we want to get the island of Cephalonia for ourselves now that we're at peace we can get again Karakuyunlu as a rival we also can get 5% crownlands extra let's actually summon the diet first so we don't need to fight rebels and Sivas owned by the Mamluks hell yeah where is Sivas oh it's in the Ottoman land Oh my schnipple do ba do ba da ba da boo. That's what I want. That's literally what I want. Ah yes, the Furusia, which gives us 25 army tradition, but we lose 5,000 manpower. Now, if you do not want to lose 5,000 manpower, you can do this, and then um, after you click this button, you still keep these guys and you just cancel them. But that's honestly a little bit of a cheese, and I'm just gonna take the 5,000 manpower hit there. With that extra army tradition, we should be fine in uh, the war against the Ottomans. We're gonna set Geli bolu as our main war target and we're gonna start this a uh, nasty war and we're also gonna be focusing actually first on akoyunlu take them out of the war before we start focusing on the uh, ottomans themselves looks like they also did not maintain this uh, capital fort so that should be a little bit easier for us to take it and that's pretty much it for the army of akoyunlu was nice knowing your boyos the galleys that we commissioned earlier have finished so now we have more ships than the ottomans i didn't cobbledrate akoyunlu but i'm still taking two provinces by the border with uh, Karakoyunlu 
blue and this is a tactical thing because it allows me to attack these boyos and uh, take more of their land. I could have done so even before because I have a core so I can do a reconquest of core from my vassal uh, Fadal here but by the time that I'll likely attack these guys Fadal might be integrated depending on what RNG decides. So this is kind of just an insurance let's say. Hiss and Kaifa I'm honestly just killing off out of principle because they are the last of the Ayubids and the Mamluks are kind of the ones that kicked out the Ayubids. This is what's left of them. I'm just finishing the job here okay. The Ottomans just trapped half of their army on the island of Rhodes which is likely one of the biggest brain things they've ever done in recent years. And yes I am barraging every single fortification that I can barrage by the coastline because I don't have the patience and I just want this war to be over the sooner the better. By the way guys if you're interested in this save game you'll find it available on my Patreon or as a channel member as well and do consider subscribing. I am a full-time content creator and just that simple one subscription really helps me out so much more than you can imagine. Of course only subscribe if you do think you will enjoy the content. If you don't enjoy it that's fine I fully understand you don't need to subscribe. Just know I will be silently judging you okay there's gonna be some silent judging. Hot diggity dog that was extremely fast taking a deer and in fact it's been taking me a lot longer to take Sugla compared to all the other okay look at that 555 days okay that's exactly what I'm talking about here but yeah now we can do our peace deal um I honestly I just want to take these lands here to cuck on over the Ottomans plus I don't mind taking this so I can get a connection to Serbia but I'm not gonna do that in this war I'm only taking Sivas because I can release a retina from here so I'm just gonna take the money afterwards and that's pretty much it let's go with the peace deal it literally took us only five years in this war to kill the Ottomans off and we started the war with uh, one tech behind them which is literally why it took us five years otherwise would have taken a lot less and now we're gonna release Bulgaria and Eretna and feed them back the cores in the next war against the Ottomans wait a schneckond Mosul area am I getting a claim on the entirety of the Iraqi area not the entirety of the Iraqi area but a lot of these provinces holy mother of god I love that CB we're gonna use that let's wait for our troops to get here first I am gonna enable scootage on Hejaz, Fezan and uh, Fadl because I'll be integrating these guys whilst I'm at war with Karakoyunlu and in order for me to integrate them they need to be at peace which means I have to enable scootage and I'm also gonna give out this privilege Emir's integration policy that means I'm not gonna get the Diplo rep Malice after I integrate these boyos and I'm not going for the reconquest of uh, Fadl's core since I don't care about their core I care about taking my stuff more than anything else also just realized I could have vassalized Mazandran but I did not co-belligerate them that's a mistake because that would have been easy for me to get the Samarkand which I need for the unification of Islam we just got the uh, mission that offers us Diplo annexation minus 15% now because now we're integrating our vassals so it's gonna be of massive help oh my dear Ottomans what did you do to my little caraman future vassal here sir did you just completely destroy them oh my lord I'm just kidding I'm obviously super happy they did this because now look at all the juicy cores we got that we can feed over to the uh, Karamanians and let's do this all power cost minus five percent sounds amazing to me oh no 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 Karakoyunlu you actually want to unsiege the fort that I just sieged cannot let you do that sir I'm gonna have to ask you to get the schnapple dupe out of here okay get the schnapple dupe out of here and with the hejaz integrated we now can start doing our peace deals let's start with the uh, Rasids. cannot what occupied by an enemy is not occupied by me oh my god it's occupied by Aden I actually thought it's occupied by me because it looks exactly the same like my color oh well in any case we're gonna have to attack Aden after so it's a o I don't know what happened there when it comes to Karakoyunlu though I am gonna be going for this disgusting peace deal and uh, hear me out I know what you're saying right now oh you should take only one province and then you release Iraq my bro I know okay I no. Look at that juicy 97% overextension there, boys. That is just delicious. If you don't have overextension when you're playing as the Mamluks, you're doing something wrong. Also, let's uh, diplo vassalize these guys. I forgot about them. Let me improve relations a little bit more. Hey, look at that, boys. We can get 9,000 moon power. Of course, I'm going to go for that. I need the moon power. Um, excuse What the hell is happening here, Hungary? <laughs> is Hungary actually carpet sieging the Ottomans right now? Every time I see this country's name, Shervan, 
I think about the uh, wine. Shiraz, I know, it's not related. Because Shiraz is from Iran, from this area somewhere. Oh, there you go, it's here. I don't know why. Just Shervan, Shiraz, sounds similar to me. Maybe there's a wine called Shervan, and I'm I'm thinking about that somehow. Wait, what? Mushasha just had a war with uh, Karakoyunlu, and they managed to win. They took two provinces from QQ. Bro, we vassalized Mara, which means that we now can start expanding more in these lands, since I also want to take uh, Muscat from Hormuz. This is going to make it a lot easier for me to do so. I've also directly taken control of uh, Socotra, and now it's time to do my peace deal with Aden. Just got to get rid of these rebels first. 117, 110. All right, so we can do this peace deal right now. Again, nobody gives a schnapple dupe about these boys, and I can kill off the rebels right afterwards. Let's bring our army back as well, since we don't need them here anymore. Now that our truce is over with the Tunisians, we're going to be expanding into the west, cobaladrating Granada and Morocco, because we do plan on taking some provinces from Morocco as well. Oh no, we have an stacken Vapeni come on the Tunisian. And take that, you sussy and bastardski. Because, you know, they are actually sus. Despite the fact that Granada is uh, at war with literally everybody around here, <laughs> and uh, the fact that uh, Portugal's got 68% war score, I still am able to vassalize them 148, 119. And I can take some money as well. If I do vassalize, I'm going to be in a war against the Portuguese and the Castilians, which is a okay. Only against the Castilians? What about the Portuguese war? Oh, right, because the Portuguese war is a little bit different because I am at war with Morocco. And if I was to take lead in the war against the Portuguese, I would have Morocco on my side. So that means I'm still going to take lead in that war once I peace out Morocco. Actually, that's not so bad because I don't mind being uh, only Castile to worry about now since I can just quickly take one province that I need from the Castilians, namely this province in Cordoba. All right, we got Toledo. Maybe that is enough to get the one province. Yes, it is actually. I really don't want anything else from them. Maybe a little bit of cash and that is pretty much it. Let's uh, get back here to our bees and trees since we need to peace out the Moroccans now. We've got a pretty significant call for peace. 0.81 per month is massive. I was going to be snaking all the way into Ifni, but Portugal decided they want to be the nasty boys and they took the province of Sus, which means I cannot. So I'm just going to snake like this instead and take a little bit of money in return. And now that I am at peace, I'm going to enforce my uh, peace over the Portuguese because I still cannot get cold in the Portuguese war that my Granadan vassal has. It's just how the game works. However, I can do enforce peace because Granada still is my vassal and that means I can just attack him like this now. All right, time to make peace with the Portuguese. I'm going to get province for my uh, vassal Granada since this is a core of Granada anyway and this way we have access between uh, Europe and North Africa. Get a bit of money to uh, Dariago. That is peace in our times at least for the time being. Time for a quick war in the Arabian Peninsula to finish off Yemen, Dawasir and whatever is not our vassal. And for that matter we're gonna get rid of the Templars too since uh, they exist again and they're annoying again. I'm also gonna be taking the coastline of Muscat from this war. I'm taking a lot of extra aggressive expansion simply because I was a dumb dumb and I I forgot to cobaladrate muscat, so I'm taking double the AE for no reason. Don't forget to cobaladrate nation, boys. And let's cancel the core of the Knights on Rhodes, which is a rightful Byzantine clay, my beloved vassal, of course. Let's destroy this fort, it's absolutely useless, and kill some rebels. And of course, we lose one stability. Why wouldn't we lose one stab, right? Dawasir, I believe you have something that's mine. Wait, was that Ming that just made me their rival? Holy mother of god, Ming rivaled me, guys. I barely even see them man i guess they see more of me than uh, i see of them i have to say that the way the uh, pontic steps here look is absolutely disgusting crimea basically migrated to the east running away from the poles no guy went into the west and for some reason muscovy did not kill kazan just yet but they took a little bit of a chunk of the great horde but then again i'm not one to talk considering the amount of border gourd that i just committed this session take note though if we get 10,000 likes i would love to get a second part done for this where we unify Islam and I explain a little bit more how you should do a world conquest and what the Mamluks should look like in the mid game if you're going for that world conquest because the first step obviously was spreading our tentacles we did that we got all the way into Tafilal here Granada the Balkans the Caspian Sea and we're even at the doorsteps of uh, India so for the second phase we obviously will likely kill off most of India to get those rich spots
spices. Plus, we will likely be taking colonial ideas since I have some interesting thoughts about what this run could look like. So until the next time, check out this awesome Ottomans video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. If anybody else would like to also support me, you will find the links in the description. 